If I owned your business, I would do things differently. Hey everyone, I'm Neil Patel and today I'm going to break down what Neil Patel would do if he owned your business or website. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to this channel and if you're on YouTube, click the alert notification. Look, there are six questions I would ask if I owned your business. These questions will open up new opportunities and make you grow your traffic and sales. So let's dive right in. Question number one, do you have a winning product or service? And here's what I mean by this. No matter how good of a marketer you are or a business owner you are, if your product or service isn't amazing, you're not gonna do well in the long run. What people don't realize, if you look at businesses that have been around for ages, like Nike, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, General Electric, General Motors, Ford, and the list goes on and on. These businesses typically don't generate the majority of their sales from TV ads or billboards or SEO or paid ads. It actually comes from word of mouth. But how do you get that word of mouth really going? It's all about building amazing product or service. Because if people really love what you have to offer, they're going to start talking about it. And one way that you can see if you're going in the right direction is by doing an NPS survey. So NPS stands for Net Promoter Score. It pretty much tells you how good you're doing. The higher the number, the better. And what I would do is, as you're doing this NPS, keep getting feedback. So if you have low scores and people aren't satisfied with your product or service, ask them why. Ask them what you can improve. Because if overall, in the long run, if you continually improve your product and service and iterate it, you won't have the best score right away from day one. But over time, as you improve it, what you'll find is you will get way more word of mouth sales. The second question that I would ask is, do you have a proven sales process in place? Look, I don't care how good someone is at marketing, sales really does win at the end of the day. I had a company back in the day called Kissmetrics. We raised around $16 million of money during our peak, and there was another company called Mixpanel that came up after us. During the beginning, they raised less money than us. Eventually, they raised way more money than us. I believe they raised over 50 plus million dollars over time. But during the early days, they started beating us. And we're just like, how is this possible? Kissmetrics, see, these days is no longer around, but we had double, triple the traffic that they did during the peak. And we're like, how are they generating way more revenue? They weren't doing paid ads or anything better than us or even SEO better than us. But you know what they were doing better than us? Sales. Sales is priceless and don't take it for granted. Even if your product is better or you're first to market, if you suck at sales, you're not spending enough time in that, you're not gonna do as well. Um, there's a book that I would love you to check out, Winning by Design. Check it out, it's great for sales. And even though if you don't have a SaaS company, you can still use a lot of those principles for any type of business. The third question that I would ask is, have you built a marketing funnel? Look, in marketing, costs have continually gone up. Marketing is no longer affordable. It keeps going higher and higher over time. And that's not really gonna change. But how do you make the numbers work with marketing continually going up in expenses? Whether it's paid ads or SEO, you still gotta pay for people, time, sometimes you have to pay for the ad spots, but marketing is going up. Well, the way you counteract this is by improving your conversion rate. And that's things like testing your button color or copy your images, and you should be doing that. But here's the thing, what we found that generates the best ROI when it comes to conversion optimization is creating that marketing funnel. And in that funnel, you want upsells and downsells. So if you have a service-based business, for example, at my ad agency, NP Digital, we help people grow their traffic. So if you need help with your traffic, check us out. But let's say you come in the door and you pay us for SEO. Later on, we'll upsell you into paid advertising management. Let's say you pay us on that. Later on, let's say your e-commerce. We may pay you on, or we may pitch you on managing all your Amazon paid spend, your Walmart uh, listings, your Target listings. Then we may pitch you on conversion optimization. Then we may pitch you on email marketing services. You see how we're continually upselling to get that extra money out of our customer. Now, of course, if we weren't providing results, it wouldn't work. But because at NP Digital, we have a really good track record, people are okay with taking us up on those upsells. 
And you need to do something similar with your service-based business. If you're selling a product, you can add upsells right upon checkout. So for example, if you're a Legion Athletics, Legion Athletics is a supplement company. They sell protein powder. And let's say you go and you buy protein powder. They may have some other supplements that can help you get buffer faster. So that speed part is a great upsell. And whether you say yes or no to that, you still wanna offer another upsell. So you can have two upsells or offers in your checkout. One is on speed and one is on automation. So anything that you can do to upsell people to get the results faster or in a more automated way so they do less work, the more likely you have of people taking up on those offers. The fourth question is, do you collect leads? I don't care if you're B2B, B2C, e-commerce service, you need to collect leads. What I mean by a lead is at least collect the email address. If I have an e-commerce site, when someone leaves, I may offer them coupon code, offers, a discount if they put in an email address. Service-based business, want to register for a webinar, read extra premier content, or get a free course, put in an email address. Back in the day when I started marketing, I met this guy named Frank Kern. And Frank Kern does amazing with copy and email marketing. And Frank once told me, the money's in the list. Your list is like an ATM machine. And he's spot on. Emails, you know, I was once talking to a company called Overstock, e-commerce company. They're like, one of our large channels is email. And this was years and years ago. And I bet it's similar today. So don't take your list for granted. Even B2B company like mine, NP Digital, we collect a lot of leads through email. And those leads eventually convert into customers. Fifth question is, is your website minimally optimized from an on-page perspective? Because if you haven't really optimized everything, you need to fix that. So what I would do is head over to Ubersuggest and put in your URL. Once you put in your URL in the left-hand navigation, go to the site audit report. The site audit report will break everything down from an SEO standpoint, and it'll show you your errors. It'll show you even things like Google Core Vitals information, like load time, how well you're doing, what you need to end up fixing. And what's cool about the site audit report on Ubersuggest is it breaks down the errors in priority. The top ones are the ones that you should fix first, and then the ones lower on the list are the ones that you should fix last. The reason it's prioritized is, look, I know everyone is strapped for time, so might as well fix the stuff first that provides the biggest bang for the buck. The sixth question that you need to ask yourself, before you're getting organic traffic, What's your traffic strategy to getting sales? The best approach is typically gonna be either outbound sales, paid advertising, partnerships, affiliates, all those kind of things work extremely well. And I'll give you a few ideas. If I was in e-commerce and selling a physical product, I may go to influence.co, try to find influencers, hit them up on these social platforms, get to know them, and try to do a deal with them where I'll pay them a commission for every sale that they drive. And here's a trick with that. When they're driving people to your landing pages, you want their image to be on the landing page. It typically helps boost conversions. You need to make sure they're okay with that as well and get their permission for that. In B2B, amazing strategy that I found that works extremely well at the beginning is partnerships. So we're a marketing agency. At NP Digital, we may partner up with dev shops. So let's say there's these e-commerce development shops that are redoing people's Shopify site or big commerce site. We'll work with these dev shops because they're like, hey, these guys, have this traffic, they have this big e-commerce store, they need people to drive more traffic and fine tune it, so then we'll partner up with these dev shops. And then on the flip side, we may have customers that we're driving a lot of traffic to, these e-commerce sites are getting bigger and we're just like, hey, your site's a mess, you need to clean up your code, we recommend talking to that dev shop over there. So it's a win-win situation. And if you follow those tactics that I just broke down in this video, or you just ask yourself these questions, you'll find more opportunities for you to grow. Now, if you need help with your marketing, check out my ad agency, NP Digital. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I'm here to help you and answer your questions. If you enjoyed this video, like it, share it, tell the people about it. Thank you for watching.